Hi there. Thanks for watching. So today for something different, I wanted to talk about stomach vacuums. Now, when a lot of you imagine stomach vacuums, you probably think it was a trick that old timey bodybuilders used to use to suck in their gut, narrow their waistline and enhance the appearance of their chest, lats and deltoids. And originally, perhaps that was a bit true. But during the golden era of bodybuilding, it evolved into a pose that a lot of bodybuilders incorporated into the routine. And it demonstrated a great deal of muscularity, muscle control and symmetry. Now, one of the legendary vacuums of all time was Frank Zane. I mean, Frank Zane, in my opinion, was legendary on so many levels. That's just my opinion, maybe. But um, his vacuum pose became iconic. Now, you don't see it a lot today in modern bodybuilding. Uh, you might see it in classic competitions or physique competitions, but in what we consider professional bodybuilding nowadays, it's pretty much fallen by the wayside. What I didn't know until a couple of years ago was that if you practice this technique, you are strengthening and toning what's called the transverse abdominus muscle. And by doing so, you can actually narrow your waistline. Now, the transverse abdominus runs from the back of the spine all the way around to the front. It's the deepest of the abdominal muscles and it attaches at the front and up and under your rib cage. Now, I'm gonna show you a technique that strengthens and tones the transverse abdominus. And it's a technique that I started doing about two years ago after learning more about this. And I didn't start doing it like three times a week for a month to see what the results would be. I just started incorporating it into my regular workout routine when I was doing abs, maybe once a week, once every couple of weeks, I don't know. And then I didn't really pay attention to the results I was getting. But over the last few months, I've managed to get into a bit more of a routine with my workouts again. I'd sort of fallen off a little bit just because life got really hectic. But lately, I've been getting into the gym pretty regularly. I was feeling pretty strong. I came back from the gym last week and uh, I went into the bathroom to change and I snapped a shameless selfie. And it's right about now when I am seriously regretting talking about Frank Zane and posting a picture of him posing just before I show a picture of myself without a shirt on. But here we are. Now, I looked at the picture and I thought that my waist looked more narrow. And so I compared it to a picture that I had taken a couple of years ago. Now the musculature is very similar. My weight's about the same. The fat percentage I'm thinking is about the same. I've always had fairly broad shoulders and I've always had a fairly narrow waist, but I've always had a bit of blockiness through my midsection. And I've noticed a change in that. So I'm gonna show you the technique that I use uh, in case you wanna try it out with your workouts. Now I've seen it demonstrated different ways. You can do it standing. You can do it seated. Some people do it on all fours on the floor. I've also seen people demonstrate it leaning over on a chair or on a weight rack. Personally, I do it lying on the floor. Now, there are a few reasons for this. The main reason is that when I started to incorporate this into my regimen, I was doing abs at the gym, so I was already lying on a mat on the floor. Uh, another reason is that it involves kind of envisioning trying to push your belly button towards your spine. And uh, when you're lying on the floor, you can kind of envision trying to push it like into the floor. And I find that that helps. The third reason is just that um, it involves a lot of heavy breathing, holding your breath and trying to tense your muscles. And at least when you're first starting out doing it, you might find that it makes you a little bit lightheaded. If it does, by all means, stop doing it. I don't want you passing out and trying this. But uh, when you're starting out, if it does make you feel a little bit lightheaded, lying on the floor is not a bad place to be. So what I do is I will lie on the floor and uh, I'll take a couple of really, really deep breaths. I will exhale as completely as I can. When I get all of that air out of me, what I do is then I suck my stomach in and I try and push my belly button back to my spine, into the floor, as it were, and hold it for as long as I can. Now, I've kind of gotten in the habit of sort of tapping the abdominal muscles just to ensure that they're still engaged. Uh, a lot of times you can sort of inhale, tighten everything up, and if you're not paying attention, things will sort of relax after a couple of seconds. So I always make a conscious effort to sort of tap different areas of my abs just to tell myself that these muscles are engaged and they're still tensed. So I'll hold my breath for as long as I can, keep my stomach as tense as I can for as long as possible. When I can't hold my breath any longer, 
I take a deep breath, I relax, I take a few deep breaths, and repeat. Now I'll do this variation for about five reps. I do two different variations for two different reasons, and now I'll show you the second one. It's very similar to the first. You're lying on the floor, you take a few deep breaths, you exhale as much as you can, you suck your stomach in, but this time what you're focusing on is drawing your stomach, your diaphragm, everything up under the rib cage. Now the reason for this is that the transverse abdominus is connected to the diaphragm and when you do this variation of the technique you're engaging the muscle in a different way and ensuring that you're working in the muscle completely. So in this variation what I do is I try like I say suck the diaphragm up under the rib cage tighten the muscles as much as you can across your abdomen and then every few seconds what I'll do is I'll kind of tap around my belly button and try and involve pushing that back to my spine intermittently. And I just find that this variation engages the muscle in a different way than the previous variation and it gives you a very complete workout of that muscle. So like I say, I do five repetitions of the first variation and five repetitions of the second. I'll usually break them up. I might do five repetitions of the first variation in the middle of my workout and do the second variation at the end. Now, like I say, this exercise does not need to be done lying on the floor. You can do it standing at the bus stop waiting for your bus. You can do it seated at your desk during the day. You could do it in the morning when you wake up lying in bed or before you go to sleep at night. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. Um, leave any questions or comments in the comments section below. If there's any content, again, that you'd like to see, leave it in the comments. If you're so inclined, I'd appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe button and follow me on this YouTube journey. And uh, that's it for today. Have a great day and thanks for watching.